Number 11 makes the difference between a dorm and a bedroom. The biggest money waste is to buy a twin XL comforter. Hi guys, welcome to today's video. This is the first part in a little four part video series where I am going to be reflecting on my past four years of college, giving some tips and some tricks and some of the things that I learned if you are getting ready to start college. A little bit of background information, I just finished all of my coursework at Northern Arizona University for a BSED in elementary and a Bachelor of Arts in Modern Languages. I haven't graduated yet. I shouldn't teach and then graduate in December, but I have finished all of my courses, which is a great feeling. I know that so many of you may not really know what the fall holds for you right now, um, if your school is reopening, if it's not, if you haven't decided to go back yet. I know that it might be a really uncertain time, but something that helps me in these uncertain times is kind of planning the little fun things, which is what I'm gonna try to do with this video, help ease some anxieties where it's applicable to you. If you're new here, my name's Hannah. I am a pre-service teacher from Arizona and I make content about my life as a young married college student. Subscribe if you'd like to stick around for more and thumbs up this video if you're going to college. The first video of the series is um, how to make your dorm feel more like home, how to make it cute, how to make it cozy and homey and not feel like you're at a dorm. I don't have video of my dorm because I haven't lived in a dorm for like four years, three years, but I do have lots of pictures that I'm going to be showing throughout as I talk about each thing to kind of give you a visual, maybe some inspiration. The first thing that is so essential, if you don't use any other tip, just watch this tip and then click out of the video if you want. The first thing is a queen size comforter. The biggest money waste is to buy a twin XL comforter or twin XL bedding in general. Twin XL sheets you kind of can't really get around. I just bought a really inexpensive pair of twin XL sheets and used that for the like nine months that I lived in my dorm. But if you get a queen size comforter, there's a couple of reasons. First, you can keep your bed low, low enough or high enough to hold storage underneath and then you can cover it with the comforter. So the comforter will hide all of the storage under your bed and it'll look like a really pretty bed. It'll look cozy and inviting as opposed to having like your bed up high, um, not having storage, not having it be like an inviting place to be. It makes it a lot cozier to have a large comforter. It covers the storage on the bottom and it makes your bed extra cozy. The next reason is because when you move, you wanna be able to use your comforter. If you move into an apartment or your first home or whatever, a twin XL comforter probably won't really help you very much, but if you have a queen size comforter, you can bring it to every single place you live after that for however long it lasts. That's what I've done with mine. It's carried me through all of these years and I'll probably have it for a long time because I just changed the duvet cover out when it gets worn out. Number two is the only really kitchen things you need, which is a small cutting board, one or two small knives, a set of silverware, one or two plates, one or two cups, and one or two bowls. You don't need that much, but as long as you have enough to be able to eat when you need to and to be able to prepare a couple things in your dorm, you'll be good to go. Number three is lamps and fairy lights. My biggest piece of advice is to never turn on your overhead lights. They will make you feel like you are in school. I have always gotten my lamps thrifted for just a few dollars, 10, 15 dollars. You can change out the light bulb to like a warm colored light if you like, or fairy lights hung up on your wall or a combination of both will change the atmosphere in your room so much. Number four is your own scents. So be that like an essential oil diffuser. I had one of those, I also had a wall plug-in, um, like a wall plug-in with a pumpkin scent in it. I will admit I lit candles in my dorm. I'm not encouraging you to do so. Most dorms don't allow it, but just have your own sense to make it smell really homey and appealing. Maybe whatever you like to burn or not burn, <laughs> whatever you like to diffuse or have as a scent in your own room at home, maybe bring that. It'll make it feel extra cozy. Number five goes back to my first tip and that is storage bins that fit underneath your bed. I just had two big totes and then a couple of cloth bins and I fit everything like my extra bedding, all my extra food, my out of season clothes, everything like that fit underneath my bed and was hidden by my comforter. You should have sizes for everything, like measurements for the furniture in your dorm should be online. Number six is potted plants. Plants just add so much light 
and life to a room. Number seven is laundry detergent and a hamper that you can really easily carry. More likely than not, you'll have to carry your laundry to be able to do it, take it somewhere. Mine was in the basement and it was a heck of a time getting up and down the stairs with the laundry basket. So have a laundry basket that's really easy for you to carry and don't forget detergent. Number eight is inexpensive picture frames. You can get them thrifted, garage sales, Ikea, whatever floats your boat. And then things to fill them with, either little drawings that you've done, things that you've printed off, wrapping paper, prints that you found, prints from local artists that you like, art that you found thrifted, whatever you want. You can make a gallery wall for a couple of bucks and it looks so good. It makes your room feel so much more homey and cozy to have things on the wall that look like they've been designed well. Having a gallery wall can make the biggest difference in your room and you can seriously do it for so cheap if you fill them with inexpensive things. Number nine, I don't know how well of a, or how good of a picture I have to show this, but a shelf or some sort of little container for your pantry items. Mine was a little shelf that had three drawers in it and then had a workspace on top from Ikea. I'll link it here or put a picture of it here. I had all my pantry items, plates, cups, food, stuff like that in the drawers. And then on the top, I was able to keep my coffee pot on there. If you have something that holds all your pantry items, you kind of have like a separate little food space and it's really nice to keep things organized. And then you can keep your coffee pot or kettle or whatever on the top of that. Number 11 makes the difference between a dorm and a bedroom, and that is to have a big area rug. Mine, I got from my grandparents. They were giving it away. They didn't need it in their house anymore, and so I took it and I put it in my dorm. It's huge. I think it's an eight by 10 or seven by nine. I'm sitting on it right now. But again, investing in a big rug or finding one inexpensive, finding one that someone's giving away, that's a nice area rug will make your room feel like home instead of having that gross blue gray carpet. And then I've had it in every single room since I've moved and now it's in my house. So a good rug like that, as opposed to like a small rug or a shag rug or something like that, that you won't really use after college, it will be worth the investment and it'll make your room feel really like home. Number 12 is a tray for your muddy boots. Just keep it by the door. It keeps your shoes in one place, especially if you live somewhere like me where you're coming in and your shoes are always covered in salt and mud. Number 13 is books. It's okay to bring books from home. I was worried about how much I brought from home. If you read a lot, it's worth it because every dorm room has a ton of bookshelf space and like 50, 60% of it never gets used in anyone's room because they have their textbooks and then you don't really bring anything else. If you read a lot, it's worth it to bring books. Plus their decor and they make your bookshelves look a lot more cute. Number 14 is extra blankets. If you have people over or you have sleepovers or whatever, it's worth it to have extra blankets. And also for me, my dorm was so old and they didn't turn on the heating until like November. So it was so cold. And I always slept with a bunch of blankets on my bed. My life philosophy is you can never have too many. 15 along that line is extra mugs. If you have people over for tea and coffee, it's actually a really fun way to get to know people and it's super cozy and I did it all the time. I had quite a few mugs and I would have people over and we'd drink coffee together. It just makes it a more inviting place to be. Number 16 is to have a designated bin. It can be a small one for bathroom items and toiletry items. I had a little caddy for the shower that I would take to and from the shower, but then I had a bin that I kept underneath my sink and it had all of my like makeup and toiletries and stuff like that. And it was in one contained place and that kept everything looking really organized. I think the key to keeping it looking and feeling like home is that everything has a spot. And if it's a dorm room, probably you're gonna have to provide the spots. So making sure you have a bin, however big or small you need it to be, where you can keep all of your bathroom stuff contained away. 17 is a suitcase or two. I used a couple suitcases, I think I had two suitcases that I used to help move my things into my dorm. And then I just kept them underneath my bed, put random things in there that needed to be stored. And then if you ever need to go on a trip, your suitcase is already there for you. Number 18 is healthy breakfast food. Hopefully you have a fridge in your room. I know some universities allow you to rent them. And then, like I said, having those pantry items, things like bread, avocados, yogurt or coconut yogurt, frozen fruit, oatmeal, stuff like that that you can make really easily at home is a lifesaver because if you have an early class, especially if it's cold, you probably don't wanna go to the dining hall. And it really is easy if you have the right things on hand to make 
something small for breakfast or something easy for breakfast and then have that before you go. Number 19 is a jar or vase that stands as decoration, but you can also put fresh flowers in. I love loved keeping fresh flowers in my dorm. We'd go to the farmer's market a lot on Sundays and I would pick up fresh flowers. And so if you have a vase, you don't need to buy one and you can keep it. Like I kept mine on my windowsill for decoration and then I'd put flowers in it when I had it. It's those little things that you don't really think of for a dorm, but definitely make the difference between making it homey versus like cold and you don't want to be there. And number 20 is paper, good pens, and if you do art, any art supplies, you can kind of decorate your room as you go. You can make things to fill up the walls and you're gonna wanna have good pens with you anyways in school. This one might be a little hobby specific, but I think, it, I think it's good. If you have the things on hand to make what you want to fill up your walls or to fill up those frames or whatever, you'll be more likely to do it and you won't need to go and buy the stuff. I know I left a lot of stuff at my parents' house when I moved and I wished I had it with me as far as paper, pen, stuff like that. In my next video, I will be sharing 10 things you don't need to bring to your dorm, 10 things that are a waste of money, waste of time, or a waste of space. So make sure to look out for that video. I'm gonna be talking, continuing the theme of this video, how to make it cozy and homey and how not to waste your money or waste your space when you're moving into your door and things that are just you probably won't need. If you would like to watch out for that video, make sure to subscribe. All of the videos coming out in this series will be posted throughout the month, so look out for those. And I will see you next Wednesday.